I'm so bad at thumbnails. I always forget to do a thumbnail, so often in my thumbnails I'm like, Hi everyone, so I am on a no bike at the moment. Basically, after this whole coronavirus came about, I was definitely on the cautious side, uh, quite risk averse when it comes to my spending, my discretionary spending, which is why I decided to go my no buy. I will probably reevaluate that uh, next month and see how things are going. I might be finishing this no buy very soon, but I did want to talk about a couple of things that I would really consider buying if I wasn't on a no-buy. In a way, it is good that I am on a no-buy because it does make me think about whether or not I should buy it and give myself some time to delegate about whether I want to buy it. Which, you know, I'll be honest, I haven't really thought a whole lot about makeup recently. I mean, with everything that's going on, it's kind of the last thing on my mind. I've been doing a lot of duping videos recently, like duping the vibes of, um, because I've realized that I can actually do a lot with what I have already. So like I said, I haven't really been tempted, but let, let's talk about some things that, yeah, I would really consider buying if I wasn't on a no buy. So the first thing is the Pat McGrath Divine Rose 2 palette. When I first saw this come out, I was not interested at all because pinks are not my jam. I've used pink palettes in the past. I've used a Huda one. I don't think pinks particularly suit me. You know, there are some colors that you put on your face and they do not, they do nothing for you. That's pinks. And so a pink palette. But then, then I made the mistake of watching Teresa's Dead's uh, review on the palette. And that trichrome via Sex to Terrestrial or something like that, that got me. That beautiful multi-chrome, it's stunning and I want it. I want that palette for that shade. Now, I don't actually own any multi-chromes besides the multi-chrome liners from JD Glow, which I absolutely adore. And ideally, that's the way I use multi-chromes. I don't know, realistically, would I use it? And I'm also curious, I have lots and lots of duochromes. Can I turn those duochromes into multi-chromes if I layer them on top? I don't know, I'm gonna have to experiment with that and see if I can, because maybe I can create my own multi-chrome. I don't know, maybe that's a really naive view on it because I know multi-chromes are very, um, complex and difficult to formulate. A lot of indie brands have been doing it, but this is the first mainstream band that I've seen bring out a multi-chrome and it looks gorgeous. The texture looks beautiful, the color looks beautiful. And so I want that palette for that shade. And I also like the packaging. I think the packaging is really cool. At least the one from the Pat McGrath website. I think the one selling in other places like Selfridges is just a plain black one. Like it distinguishes it and makes it obvious that that palette is that palette. So yeah, that, that one has been on my mind. Another thing that I've been contemplating for quite a while now is the Victorian Beckham Beauty little quads. The ones that kind of have that tortoiseshell brass packaging. It looks stunning. These days, that is my kind of thing. I like those smaller, compact palettes. And I like the aesthetic of her brand. I've heard good things about it. And realistically, on a day-to-day -day basis, I do very simple eye looks like I mean, today I think it's a little bit more work than what I would maybe usually do. I just like the idea of a really simple um, quad that I can chuck in my bag potentially and, you know, use without having to think too much. And I've wanted to try her makeup for ages. The only thing that kind of stopped me was the high price of the shipping. But Haley from Beauty News was saying that the reason why the shipping keeps jumping up as you add things to your cart is because it includes the tax, which I think is a little bit, it's not really doing the brand any favors because it's making us feel like the shipping is really too expensive. So I would definitely consider getting those. And I really like the kind of scattered light type of shiny cream eyeshadows as well. They look nice, but realistically speaking, I don't use those products a whole ton. When I use liquid eyeshadows, I like things that come in a doe foot applicator, which brings me to my next product. <laughs> which are the Smith & Colt Glitter Babies. I love these products. I, I know some of you have bought them on my recommendation and I'm really glad that you've enjoyed them because they are fantastic. I, I love them so much. They are different to a Stila Glitter & Glow or a like a pixie kind of fairy light type of thing because they've got a bit of a smoky base to it, which means that you can kind of use it on its own and smoke it out and sheer it out and it looks stunning. And my favorite shade is a bronze shade. It doesn't look bronze on the eye, but it's gorgeous. It's got like bits of purple glitter particles in it. It's not glitter, it's mica. So it's one of the few liquid eyeshadows that doesn't contain plastic. I just love them and I want to collect all of them. 
there's the collector in me, which I used to do that. We've seen previous videos where I did like lipstick swatches from Pat McGrath. I used to buy the whole range of everything. Not anymore. But I've been lusting after the Smith & Colt Glitter Baby in gold for the longest time and it's out of stock. It's been out of stock on Adore Beauty since I discovered them. So I'm, I'm not holding my breath on that one because I don't think they're going to restock it, which is really sad because the gold looks stunning. I'd get the gold, I'd get the copper, I'd get um, every other shade that I don't have. That is what I would be very tempted to do. Another liquid eyeshadow that I would repurchase and buy is my Kosas 10 Second Liquid Eyeshadow in Globe. I've actually finished the one that I've been using. It took me, I would say, about three months with pretty much continuous use, like daily use, to finish that up. There are still bits in the actual tube that you can't get out, which is really annoying, but I love that eyeshadow. Uh, and I think it looked really nice on the eyelid. I have textured eyelids. I got lots and lots of folds on the eyelids and I was surprised that it didn't crease. I mean, in the end of the day, it did kind of fade a little, but it didn't look like a creasy mess. It was really nice to use. The texture was beautiful. The color was stunning. It's one of those shades that I mentioned in my fuss free eyeshadows, one and done type of thing. Stunning. I would repurchase that, but for now I'm kind of letting other eyeshadows, you know, have a bit more like limelight in my life because otherwise I'd be using that every day and I wouldn't reach for anything else. So I would also buy the new lipsticks from the Suku collection that just came out. I think it's their winter collection. Basically they brought out a whole bunch of stuff like eyeshadows, blushes, lipsticks, I think some lip gloss, nail polishes. But I really love Suku lipsticks and I think that if you're one of those people that is interested in trying out the brand, their lipsticks are fantastic. They have several different lipstick formulas. I'll be honest, I'm not super adventurous with lipsticks most of the time. I do have some crazy lipsticks in my collection, but most of the time I just want a really kind of easy to wear, natural looking lipstick. And the formula is really nice. They're kind of like balmy. Um, the one I'm talking about is the orange one that I love. It's fantastic. I've got so many Suku lipsticks. I really like them. I've actually just finished the Extra Girl lipstick in 11, I think. It's that kind of beige color. One of my favorite nudes. I, I would repurchase that. I just haven't because I've got so many lipsticks. So yeah, really love Suku. If I was going back to Japan, I would definitely stop by the Suku counter, but I don't know when that's going to happen. Maybe next year. I don't know. Travel is obviously not a priority right now. This one I have been eyeing for a little bit ever since I heard Matilda talk about it. And this is the By Terry CC Brightening Palette. I've heard really good things about the brightening powders. My gripe with this is that I'm, I'm going to just double check because I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I believe it only comes in, there's only like one shade of it, which I think is it's not right. Obviously, this is not a universal palette. Some with my skin tone could probably use all the shades in here. And even if you're lighter, you could probably use it. But for people who are with deeper skin tones, no, I don't think you could use this palette. That's the problem with these kind of palettes from these type of brands. You know, they are just really bad at being inclusive. And people of color, indigenous people, black people are just not getting the same, I guess, opportunities as everyone else. And I think in makeup, it's getting a bit better, but People are still, brands are still releasing things in just one shade. And I just, I fundamentally don't agree with that. The very frustrating thing about that as well is a lot of these brands are coming out on their Instagram and their social media and saying, black life matters, black lives matters. And then they're not practicing what they preach. Uh, a big, like one that comes to mind that um, I recently saw in the news was Zimmerman, which is a very well-known Australian brand. And staff have come out, previous employees have come out and said, you know, because they did have a whole spiel on Black Lives Matters and how they agree that diversity is really important. And then in reality, you know, you've got a hair guy that says staff can only wear their hair natural, but only like straight or loose waves. But people who are black, who, their natural hair is not like that. So that is really discriminatory. It's just so hypocritical. So I think as well, it is really important to hold these brands accountable and vote with your dollars because they're saying it to hop on the bandwagon and everyone else, but they're not actually practicing what they preach. And I don't agree with that. It just comes across as disingenuous because of the stories that have come out. And if they really wanted to do more, they are really going to have to show going forward that there is a big cultural shift. I think especially in Australia, this wasn't meant to be a political video or anything like that, but in Australia, I've heard so many people say, oh, we're so lucky we live in Australia. We don't have those problems that we have in the US. And that is already 
a problem with that thinking because that's not true. We have a very black history here of you know treating our indigenous people terribly basically disadvantaging them their life expectancy is lower they're more likely to be incarcerated feeling like we're lucky that we live in australia is just a farce but anyway that really off topic um i don't agree with brands that just release one shade and white is the norm definitely got to vote with your dollars and not support releases like this hopefully that was everything i feel like that was a really short list i feel like i should have had like 10 things but sometimes it's an uneven number i i really can't think of anything else that i wanted to buy but the truth is i haven't really thought a whole ton about makeup recently i still i still watch beauty news and i still kind of you know like to see what's coming out but just nothing tickles my fancy everything has been done so i think having this time to digest and step back and and kind of rationalize it rather than just buying it without thinking too much about it which is frankly how i used to make a lot of purchasing decisions has been good. So let me know what is on your wish list. If you're on a no buy, what are you not buying but would potentially buy if you weren't on a no buy, basically? You could also just be just a regular smart consumer and not buying a lot of things, even if you're not on a no buy, because you're very good at rationalizing yourself out of purchasing things, which is my sister. My sister to a T. She thinks about things for like six months before she buys something. This no buy isn't gonna go forever. Uh, I do wanna support the local economy. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this short, sweet video and hope you guys are safe. Thank you to everyone who's been watching my videos because like I said, I will be donating all my ad revenue and matching each dollar to um, Black Lives Matters causes as well as charities that support our indigenous community in Australia because I think that is very important as well. We, we don't live in a bubble. We have issues here in Australia as well. Sorry, but not sorry for the rant. I think they're important issues to talk about. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.